Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to GH Talks Kinesiology. My name is Caitlin Billenduke and I'm the Liaison Events Coordinator here in Student Recruitment at the University of Guelph Humber. And it is my pleasure to be your host over the next hour. We have such an exciting evening ahead talking all things kin. We hope you're just as excited as we are. Now, before I introduce my other colleagues joining us today, I just wanted to go through a few housekeeping items before we begin. Now, you'll notice that we are taking a little break from the chat feature tonight. So with that said, if you do have any questions, we will be accepting those at any time in the Q&A feature on your toolbar. So with that said, you will either have your question tended to privately or we'll cover frequently asked questions live at the end of the webinar. Now we may also uh, post additional resources in the chat as well. So feel free to check those out throughout the session. Now we do ask this evening that you do keep questions specific to the program. All other upcoming program webinar dates can be found on the GH Talks website. And for programs that have passed, we will be posting those recordings shortly to our website. If you ever need to circle back on any information today, um, just like our other programs, a recording of tonight's session will be available on our website at a later date. Now, without further ado, I am pleased to introduce our first presenter, my colleague, Joseph Italiano, who will take you through who we are as a university, as well as the program, including first year courses, unique opportunities, and much more. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you, Caitlin, and hello to all of our future students this evening. My name is Joseph Italiano, and I am the Liaison Outreach Coordinator here at the University of Guelph Humber. Now, I want to begin today's presentation by giving a big shout out to all of you, as we know that being a student while navigating through this pandemic can be challenging as you transition to quad masters or octomesters to online learning, or perhaps a bit of both online and um, in person. But by joining us this, uh, this evening, it likely means that you've already taken another step in your search for a post-secondary institution, as you've already likely applied to the University of Guelph Humber kinesiology program. Now, if you haven't yet applied, the good news is there's still time to do so, but I urge you that if you're interested in applying to do so as soon as you possibly can, as the applications can close at any moment. Now, on, we'll move forward to the next slide. And as we do so, Statistics Canada released survey results that showed that 14% of recent college graduates first began their studies by completing a university degree. They chose to obtain their diploma at a college after attending university because they wanted to gain more specialized hands-on training in the college diploma that was closely related to their bachelor's degree. Well, the good news for all of you is that at the University of Guelph Humber, we are the collaboration between two renowned institutions. We have the University of Guelph and Humber College Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning. Our graduates receive both a degree that provides them with the theoretical knowledge and a diploma that provides you with the practical hands-on learning in four years of full-time study while, our, while at our one location in Toronto, saving you more time and money. Now, if you're wondering, how is this achieved? How do I receive a degree and a diploma in four years of full-time study? Well, at the University of Guelph Humber, our curriculum is more focused. This means that, the, that, that our programs consist of a majority of core courses with a maximum of five electives per program, meaning that you'll be studying what you're truly passionate about, in this case, kinesiology, starting at your very first day with us. Now at the University of Guelph Humber, we offer you more practical hands-on experiences. And this could be found through our field placements. Each of our seven focus programs at the University of Guelph Humber have built in workplace experience right into the curriculum. So depending on what program you choose, you can be completing anywhere from 100 all the way up to 850 hours of infield experience. And being located in Canada's largest city places you in the center of all opportunities. 
And the University of Guelph Humber has done an amazing job building many networks and connections with organizations and companies within our community, making it easier for you to secure those placements. Now our instructors also bring more knowledge and experience to the classroom as they are easily able to connect real life experiences to the theoretical concepts that they'll be teaching you within the class. Now this is made possible as many of them are still working or have worked for a number of years within their related area of study. Now at the University of Guelph Humber, we also provide you a more close knit community, which and ends up providing you with more opportunities to create those amazing industry connections. And by attending the University of Guelph Humber, you will experience the unique opportunity of small campus and classroom size. With a total student population of just under 5,000 students, you're placed in an academic learning environment where close bonds and friendships are inevitable. The average class size is just 49 students with the largest lecture hall being a maximum of 125 students. And a close-knit community ensures that you'll be on a first-name basis with your instructor and peers, providing you with that advantage of gaining personalized reference letters and one-on-one -on -one supports within the classroom. Now, as we move forward to the next slide, you'll see that as a kinesiology graduate, upon four years of full-time study, when you cross that stage on your graduation day, you'll receive two credentials. You'll earn an honors bachelor's of applied science in kinesiology, and this will be designated from the University of Guelph. As well, you'll also earn a diploma in fitness and health promotion, and that will be designated from Humber College. Now gaining two credentials is what makes us at the University of Guelph Humber unique, but it will also make you stand out to employers. By earning both credentials, this will tell employers that you not only have the knowledge of the field, but also the hands-on experience to do the job successfully. Now, we often get asked by students about what's the difference between a regular bachelor's of science degree versus a bachelor's of applied science. And so to clarify this for you, a bachelor's of applied science is what indicates that throughout the program, you not only receive the theory, but in addition, you receive the practical hands-on experience related to, the, related to the degree. Essentially, indicating that you not know how to translate that theory in the real world. Now, it's also worth noting that upon graduation, students from our program can become re uh, registered kinesiologists, which is a recognized medical profession within Ontario. Now, we'll move forward to the next slide. Having a close-knit community at the University of Guelph Humber ensures that you will have a meaningful experience as a student while with us. When you look at the kinesiology program, typically there are about 130 students um, within their first year, within the first year of this program. This means that the average class size for the kinesiology program is about 130 to approximately 60 students for lectures and only two uh, 20 to 25 students for your labs um, or practicum courses. Now, a smaller class size allows you to have a more interactive and engaging lectures where you are guaranteed to get to know your professors and peers on a more personal basis. And if you're asking why is it important to get to know my professor on a more personal basis, well, the answer is simple. At the University of Guelph Humber, our professors are leaders in the industry. Getting to know your professor on a personal basis will make it easier for you to gain those reference letters upon graduation, but also build critical connections within the industry. Take for example, your instructor knows of a company that is hiring for a certain position. They may automatically think of you as being the best fit and therefore, they will not hesitate to share that experience with you. Now, moving forward to the following slide, you'll see that presented here, we have a list of first year courses for students within the kinesiology program. Now, these courses are designed to give you a well-rounded understanding of the field of kinesiology. And in a few minutes, we'll also talk about some of the specialized labs that you will take part in. But for now, you'll also see first year students will take part in two anatomy courses, 
cell biology, as well as an introduction to math course. Now, just for those of you who may be a little reluctant about the math course, I wanna assure you that the math that you'll be learning within the kinesiology program is specific to math that is related to the field of kinesiology. Now, moving forward to the next slide, I do wanna bring your attention to the practicum courses that are listed here. Kinesiology students are required to complete four non-credit practicum courses. Now, these practicum courses are a, are a requirement of all kinesiology programs, and they are free to students. These practicum courses allow for students to gain more specialized hands-on training in areas that interest you. So we have a variety of practicum courses that you can choose from, and some of them we have listed here um, on the screen today. Now, these practicums are delivered in small groups to ensure that you maximize your training in these areas. And again, you'll complete four throughout your time with us. Now, moving forward, what truly sets our program apart from others is the ability for our students to gain valuable industry connections. Kinesiology students are required to complete, um, or sorry, moving forward a little too much here. Um, when we take a look on this slide here, you'll see that kinesiology students have access to specialized labs within the program. Now, students will be able to use um, state-of-the-art equipment, including bod pods, which you'll see in the tour today, but they'll also complete courses such as athletic bandaging, for example. Now, earlier, you've seen that first-year students do partake in human anatomy. And a draw to our program is that within your very first year of study and within your undergraduate degree, students are able to visit the University of Guelph's Human Cadaver Lab. Now, for those of you who may not know what a human cadaver is, a human cadaver is a body that has been donated for science and research purposes. Now, getting to gain experience with a human cadaver lab in your undergraduate degree is an extremely rare and unique experience. Now, although we are currently in an online format, our first year students still have had the ability to virtually experience the human cadaver lab um, and all have given us positive feedback. But hopefully um, soon our students will be able to return as long as it is safe to do so. Now, moving forward to the following slide. Back to uh, what sets our program apart is definitely, in addition to the specialized labs, is our students' ability to gain that valuable experience of industry connections. So kinesiology students are required to complete 87 to 241 hours of placement experience, and that takes place in their third and fourth year. Now, workplace experience is guaranteed to all of our students at the University of Guelph Humber. So there's no need to worry about missing out on this amazing opportunity. Now to further break this down for you, in your third year, um, you will complete an on and off can off site placement. And we'll move forward to the next slide. Um, actually, sorry, if you can go back, I didn't realize that they're on here. So if you take a look at this slide, you'll see that third year placement um, you'll complete that both on and off site. So on site, you'll be paired with a, um, with a client as you help them reach their personal fitness goals. But you'll also experience working two off campus placements, one in your third year and one again in your fourth year, where you will gain experience working with organizations that help give you those applied experiences. So we'll move forward to the next slide. Um, and as mentioned at the beginning of today's presentation, the University of Guelph Humber, more specifically, career and placement services, have built many connections and partnerships with employers in our very own community. And presented on this slide, you'll see a short list of some of the employers that we have made connections with. Now, this by no means is an exhaustive list. This is just a, a short list to give you a rough idea of some of the amazing partners uh, that you will be able to um, have your placement experience with. Now, in the past, we've had students complete their placements with uh, the Ontario Lung Association, Aim to Walk Neurological Rehabilitation Center, 
uh, and Sick Kids Hospital, to name a few. Now we'll move forward to the next slide. As you embark on your post-secondary journey, many of you may find it refreshing to know that we at the University of Guelph Humber are here to support you. We have academic advisors who are similar to your guidance counselors, and they are here to support you along your academic journey. Now the Student Wellness and Accessibility Center is also available for students who require accommodations. And students will also have access to inclusive services, such as the LGBTQ plus resource center, the International Center, the Indigenous Education and Engagement Center, and many more. And today, we are also joined by Sandra Fazio, one of many career service coordinators, but one that is designated to the kinesiology program, who will share with you all of the amazing services and supports that they provide, but also what you are able to do with your degree and diploma once you graduate from the University of Guelph Humber. Sandra, without further ado, take it away. Thanks, Joseph. Hi, my name is Sandra Fazio and I'm a Career Services Coordinator here at the University of Guelph Humber. My portfolio takes in, as Joseph has said, kinesiology, justice, and psychology. I am part of an eight member team that look after a career and placement service here at the university. And our role is really to be very, uh, we provide personalized and relevant career service to our students from year one right through to graduation and actually even afterwards as alumni. Whether you're looking for a job, developing networking skills, researching and preparing graduate school applications or defining your career goals, as the slide says, we are here to help. Next slide, please. As a career services coordinator, my role is really to network with employers and to explore current, ex, excuse me, to explore potential career paths with students. So I meet with students on a regular basis to discuss their aspirations of, for further education um, or where they wanna go for field placements. So as Joseph had pointed out, we do on and off campus placements. And it's during those off campus placements that we really provide uh, opportunities for students. I'm also um, uh, involved in job fairs, career workshops, uh, skill building workshops for cover letters, resumes, CVs. Um, I do a graduate uh, school exploration with all students, and we actually have an annual fair that comes on campus or this year virtually. We do one on one support, like I said, and we have many online services that are available to students. Next slide, please. As Joseph had pointed out, these are some sample careers. It, again, it's not an exhausted list. Uh, our students can go in a variety of different ways. Your degree gives you a way of thinking. Um, so with that way of thinking, we really uh, discuss with students where are their greatest area of interest. So we do see that our students, many of our students go on to be registered kinesiologists. So your course does prepare you for writing that exam at the end of your four years. I see a lot of students again that are going on to be certified strength and conditioning specialists. Um, I have students that are part of, uh, that are entrepreneurs that start their own businesses, um, clinic managers, certified exercise uh, psycho uh, physiologists, uh, health promotions manager. I have two right now that are working for Rogers Canada. Um, so some, some great opportunities. Uh, insurance adjusters, believe it or not, they always want my kinesiology students. There's more education that's required for that one, but definitely it's something that you can do. And again, occupational health, wellness and ability advisors. We see a lot in uh, orthopedics, uh, prosthetics in design. I've seen students that have gone on to do different careers in pedorathists. Um, so really some great things that can happen. Researchers, we see a lot of researchers. So for my students in their, uh, when they go into their fourth year, they have an opportunity to do a second placement or to do uh, a thesis. So my students that go on to do thesis would then be able to go on to do um, a master's in research. Next slide, please. Which kind of leads us nicely into the next one, which is further education. We do see that our kinesiology students are able to get into all of these programs that you see in this list here. 
Um, this year alone, I've had students that have gotten into the Canadian Naturopathic College to become a naturopathic doctor. So our students are there for sure. Uh, last year, I had a student get into Queen's University uh, into medical school um, and Connor is doing very, very well. He went in to be an endocrinologist, started, um, and this is an example of starting early. So your career is built in nice, small little steps. So understanding your career aspirations, coming in and doing some exploration in those first and second year really will help to guide you as you move forward. We do see students that get in as occupational therapists, physiotherapists. I have a student that just got into their bachelor's of education because uh, they wanna go on to be an Ontario certified teacher. So we see students in all areas. Next slide, please. These are some current statistics. This came from 2019. We do a graduate um, survey uh, from our alumni services department, which is also part of career and placement service. Um, and 89.7% of our graduates were currently employed or pursuing further education. And 75.4% of our graduates uh, consider their career to be either highly related or somewhat related to the skills that they, they acquired during their program. We spend a lot of time in career and placement service really um, educating you on the uh, on a four year plan really taking those small steps from year one right through to graduation. We really work with you to see that there is an end goal here right which is really getting a career of your choice. Next slide please. These are some testimonials. We work very closely with the Distress Center of Greater Toronto and Maureen Elliott. She comes to do networking events uh, for our programs. And this is just one opportunity uh, for you as a student would be able to not only do career fairs uh, and be part of that. And we've been doing that virtually just like we would in our beautiful atrium, which you'll see in the slide uh, coming up next. Uh, but we also see these the, our um, industry partners networking with us. So again, just like your opportunity to have small class sizes, I host networking events. So I'll have two or three industry partners. And we, reg we get students to register and you get to come online and you get to actually talk to the industry partner. So some really cool opportunities. Next slide, please. And this one is CAMS Kids Foundation. This is Vanessa Morgan. Um, and this is a, an advocacy group that really works with um, our students on campus. Um, and it's an online um, field placement for some of our programs and also an opportunity for students to be able to be part of something uh, larger. It's really working with people that have anxiety disorder um, and being able to network uh, through texting, through call helplines, all sorts of wonderful things. We do have a chapter at the University of Guelph Humber, so here's an opportunity for you as a student to give back to your community and join something like this. Next slide. Which I think, if I remember correctly, goes to our guest speaker. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Sandra, for all of that wonderful information, and as well as Joseph, um, for providing all that great information about the kinesiology program. So whether you have a career path in mind or, um, or you in the audience are still navigating your options, um, I think it's definitely safe to say that placement and experiential learning are now becoming so much more vital, so important to, um, so that you're graduating with not only just the knowledge, but experience, which helps give you confidence to help you push forward and guide through your career decision and success for the time you graduate. So as you continue doing your post-secondary university research, make that one of the key considering factors when choosing the most suitable program for you and consider all of the opportunities that that program can lead you to after you graduate. So finally, moving forward, you all might be thinking that the information that Joseph and Sandra presented today sounds amazing, but we know how important it is when doing your research to really try before you buy. And your research would certainly not be complete without hearing from a current student yourself about their experience and what they hope to achieve in the future. So with that said, I am pleased to introduce Jessica Fernandez, a third year student in our kinesiology program uh, to chat with us today. Welcome, Jessica. Hi, Katie, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I do have a few questions for you that I'm sure our audience 
is very curious to know. So before we jump into that, this is just a reminder for our guests out there in the audience. If you do have any questions or even any feedback for our staff and students throughout this webinar, um, please don't continue, uh, sorry, please do continue to submit those through the Q&A chat as we do love to hear from you. So without further ado, I do have a first question, Jessica. So in our kinesiology program, um, you learn all about how the human body functions and what can be done to make sure that the body functions to its best possible way by taking courses such as human anatomy, exercise techniques, and prescription and health promotion. Can you tell us what some of your favorite courses have been and why? Okay. Um, so my two favorite courses by far have to be human anatomy and human physiology. And these two courses really give you like a solid foundation of the important properties of the human body and pretty much how the different systems of the body interact and keep our bodies functioning optimally. So what I like about human, human anatomy is the lecture component because we learned the fundamental structures of the human body. And then the lab component of anatomy allowed me to actually apply these concepts to real life scenarios as we go to the human cadaver lab at the University of Guelph and actually see the human body in person as opposed to through a textbook. So that is a great advantage. Uh, what amazed me in particular with the human body is how like intricate and unique all the structures are in the body. And seeing the cadavers in the laboratory was probably the best learning opportunity I could have asked for. Um, and one another class that I mentioned was human physiology that I really enjoyed. Um, I really liked it because it taught me how resilient the human body is. And it provided me an understanding of the many biological responses the human body encounters. And it allowed me to develop my critical thinking skills and learning concepts that really helped me with all my other classes so far. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. I mean, anytime I've talked to any kinesiology students and um, back when I was a student, I know I had a few friends in kinesiology. I always hear about how amazing that human cadaver lab is by, at the University of Guelph. And what a rare achievement for our undergraduate students right in their first year to actually see how the body's connected. Like I know that our students have held a human heart in their hands and actually seen the lungs work by compressing oxygen through them. And you actually see how it functions firsthand. So to our guests out there, that's definitely a big highlight of, of the program. And um, yeah, I just hear about that so often. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we're gonna move on to our next question. And in your first year, as part of the human anatomy course, which again is a crowd favorite in kinesiology, you were fortunate to be taken to the University of Guelph's Human Cadaver Lab. Um, can you tell us how this lab has impacted your learning? Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, the Human Cadaver Lab is an experience that allows students to explore anatomy on the body. And this is basically a body that's donated for research purposes, courtesy of the Human Anatomy Donation Program at the University of Guelph. It was a really unique experience, as I mentioned earlier, and I was able to take part in my very first semester of my first year, which is not very, not a lot of um, universities offer that experience. So it's super valuable. Um, it did help me a lot with my hands-on learning. Um, and I'm really truly grateful for having this in my first year, because that's one of the things that drew me into the University of Guelph Humber. Absolutely. Yes, I do hear that a lot from a lot of kinesiology students. Um, being able to work with those cadavers, very, very rich, enriching experience. So we'll move on to the next question. So as a kinesiology student, um, you will be completing up to 241 hours of placement. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the skills that you've gained from your placement experiences? Yes, of course. So uh, placement experience is one of the most valuable components of the four years of studies, in my opinion, because um, working placement allowed me to like apply my theor 
theoretical knowledge <laughs> to practical situations where I can actually like feel like I'm making an impact in the community. Um, I feel like it's very helpful in uh, building connections as well, because I'm interested in the healthcare field. And my placement that I just finished, um, actually last week uh, was my last day. Um, I was helping uh, groups of clients um, with their healthy, basically helping them with making healthier lifestyle choices. And it allowed me to develop my professional skills, my responsibility, accountability, and time efficiency. Um, although it was done virtually because of COVID, I found the experience to be very beneficial as I continue to explore potential fields in my career path and uh, my placement supervisor I have as a reference now. So that is another benefit of placement. And I do have an option to take placement next semester, which I'm super excited for. That's awesome. And I know that we talk a lot about placement being amazing to definitely add those experiences to your resume. But another really great feature with placement and, and getting those industry connections is networking, because that's definitely one really crucial way to help you find careers after you graduate um, and learn more about um, what other partners are doing. Um, so that way you can learn more about the field. And what a cool way to see your education kind of come to life. So um, I'm sure our audience member can really resonate with that and, and seeing all of that. So thanks for answering. Next question I have for you is, can you tell us about any other opportunities that you've had within the program, um, such as research, society, so specifically within kinesiology? Mm, yeah, so, um... There are a lot of opportunities to get involved on campus. Um, the two, two um, societies that I'm a part of are Kin Society and GH Pre-Med Society. Um, these are two really amazing societies formed by fellow classmates and they allowed me to connect with people not only in my year, which I'm used to because of all my classes, but I could also connect with people from like fourth year, uh, first year, second year, and kind of get their perspective on things, which was very, very helpful in expanding my social skills. Um, it allowed me to uh, also add to my co-curricular record, and it's a valuable, valuable experience that you can add to your record and show your future employers and admission staff for further education. Um, there are also many research opportunities available on GH Works where students can work with professors to conduct research. And I hope to do this next semester as it's both very valuable and a re rewarding experience because you can have your name on a research paper if that is what you choose to do. Yes, thank you. Um, in terms of research, I know we have a lot of kinesiology students who um, maybe are looking to get more into the research side of things, go on to um, master's studies that um, does involve research. And yes, uh, what a great way to get involved and have your name on a big research paper. It looks very attractive on grad school applications. And then in, in terms of getting involved, it doesn't really just end in the classroom. There are so many ways to hone your kinesiology passions through those different societies that Jessica had identified and continue to be mentored by upper year students and network because again, it's so, so valuable to make those connections. Um, and it's very much possible to get those two opportunities in our tight-knit community. So moving on to the next question, Jessica, thinking back to when you were researching university programs, much like a lot of our audience is doing now, what made our kinesiology program at the University of Guelph Humber stand out to you? So when I was looking into universities, I'm always looking for like the, the perfect fit for me. So I know my learning style is hands-on and I like working in smaller groups. Large groups kind of intimidate me. So uh, knowing that the university has an honors bachelor of applied science, kinesiology, in kinesiology as well as diploma in fitness and health promotion in all four years intrigued me as well. Um, and knowing that the, the school is small, small knit community um, 
which is less intimidating for me. Um, as well, the first year cadaver lab, as I mentioned so many times, and the opportunity for placement stood out to me. Um, these are really amazing opportunities for growth and they allowed me to apply my knowledge to real life situations. And another benefit of the University of Guelph Humber is that it's conveniently located in Toronto, which is a fairly short commute for me. And it's, it's a pretty popular city. So I feel like it's not too difficult to get to. Absolutely. And Toronto has a plethora of different opportunities when it comes to work placements as well. And I know that a lot of people find that attractive. And you mentioned something very important, your number one priority being the best fit for you, which again, I encourage the audience as you do your research, when it comes down to choosing a program, it's about fit. And so again, I know for me, when I was considering universities as a hands-on learner, um, that was definitely something that attracted me to university program is all the opportunities that would lead to after graduation. So looks like you definitely did your research and I'm really happy that's all panning out for you, Jessica. So um, moving on to the next question, are you able to share with us any opportunities that have enhanced your experience at the university? So that could be work study, athletics clubs, study abroad. Um, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, so my first year, I remember being a little shy, but I wanted to put myself out there. So I tried volunteering as much as I could. Um, it's really, it's a really good idea to do in your first year because it, it puts yourself out there. Um, you do meet a lot of students from upper years who give you really good advice. Um, it also allowed me to develop, well, let me speak on which, what um, volunteering positions I, I did first. So I, I helped uh, set up the Clifton Strengths uh, workshops. Um, there was a table in the atrium and I kind of helped uh, tell people kind of what the program was about, uh, have them sign and ask if they wanted to volunteer with me as well. Um, I also helped with the science rendezvous on campus. So it was a science fair hosted for like the general public. Mostly kids came. So it was really nice to be able to, to volunteer with, within the community. Um, yeah, it helps with my public speaking skills and my communication skills and just a great overall experience to have and great on your resume. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And I know when it comes to university um, and researching university options, we tend to focus a lot on the academic side of things. And um, really great that you've highlighted that getting involved um, is really a big, big piece of the university experience because it really does truly make that experience much more memorable. And I know with, again, our tight knit community, having so many opportunities to get involved in such a small campus um, really does allow you to get to know people and make, make those connections and, and have a memorable experience. And Clifton Strengths, I'm sure a lot of you would get familiar if you become a student at Guelph Humber, um, just kind of discovering your own personal strengths and how you can apply that to a job. And I know that the Science Rendezvous is something that our kinesiology program puts on um, every year. So it's great to hear that you were a part of that, Jessica. Now I'm going to ask the next question for you. After graduating from the University of Guelph Humber, what are your plans? Okay, so this is a big question. Um, after graduating from university, um, I've been looking into a master's program, particularly like epidemiology and genetic counseling. Um, epidemiology, I was looking into at McGill University or University of Toronto. Um, as well as thinking of applying to med school overseas. So I will be, I will be uh, applying to a bunch of different programs and we'll see my luck. <laughs> well, I know that you work really hard, Jessica, and I have, um, I'm very optimistic about your future. Um, lots of really great options there um, in terms of the medical field. And I know that's a question we get a lot of is, can I go to medical school with this degree? And absolutely. Um, I know somebody who ended up doing their med school in Ireland. 
Um, so if you're like you mentioned, um, that's something you're interested in doing. If you want to blend your passion of travel and seeing the world and, and, and finishing off your uh, master's or postgraduate studies overseas, what a great experience. Um, and the healthcare field is definitely an awesome field to get into. But as Sandra had noted, there are so many amazing opportunities that you can get involved with. So thanks for sharing with that, uh, that with us, Jessica. I know you do have another year, so that's a big question. Mm -hmm. Now I do have one final question for you. Um, and I think this one would definitely be appreciated by our audience. Um, I want you to just take a moment to reflect back when you were in grade 12, like our audience, and having to make this big decision in your life. Is there any advice that you can give to our grade 12 students in this audience as they make and embark on the decision on which university they will attend this fall. Okay, yeah, so I remember grade 12 being super nervous and always doubting myself for some reason. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm getting into university, but really it's getting to know yourself, um, knowing what you're passionate about and being able to understand your strengths and weaknesses as well as, as well as knowing your learning style. And that's gonna help you determine what kind of university is best for you. So like I've mentioned earlier, I know I'm very hands-on and because the university has that hands-on um, aspect as well as the, the smaller uh, class sizes, that was the, like one of the biggest factors for me. And I knew it would, would be in my benefit to choose this university. Um, I'd also recommend that you do your research as early as possible. Um, attend the university open houses virtually or just reach out to like current students of, of prospective universities so you can get like their first hand insight on the university, how they're finding it. So, so you have more of, a, of, of an understanding of what's going on. Um, also, we know that like looking for university is very stressful, but just remember to enjoy the process and know that there's people that you can turn to for information and support. Um, the staff here at the University of Alpumber are super friendly and knowledgeable, and they're here to support you in your academic successes, as well as answer all your questions. I remember when I like first came to the University of Alpumber open house and I was like, a bit intimidated, but then I think one of the start leaders came up to me and just started talking to me and I was like, you're so nice. <laughs> um, and she answered all my questions and I was like, you know what, this, this place isn't that bad. <laughs> I mean, obviously not bad. I just, when I was intimidated at first, <sighs> yeah. I get that. I do hear from a lot of students that that it, going to the open houses and checking out the campus for themselves really solidified that decision of calling the University of Guelph Humber their home. Um, and you really did say it best. Know yourself. Um, know exactly what you're looking for. And look at we're in university. And, you're, and you succeeded and broken those barriers for yourself. And I know that a lot of you out there having those same doubts, um, I am very, I have no doubt that you all are going to um, break those barriers and get those offers and get to the school of your dreams. So thanks so much, Jessica. Um, is there anything more you'd like to add about advice or was that it for our audience? I think that that's it. Just know, know yourself, know, your learning style. Um, yeah, this university is pretty great. Um, I met some really great friends and um, some, some I believe will be lifelong friends um, because I do have one friend that I do plan on going to medical school with. And we were actually planning to go to Ireland. So hopefully all works as planned. <laughs> Ireland seems to be a pretty popular destination yep. for med school, it seems like. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jessica. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, as you went about and provided that advice to um, our students and when you were in the shoes of our applicants, um, your stories and perspective is really incredibly helpful in aiding these students on their journey to finding their best fit. So thank you again. Now, thank this you. also leads, thanks, Jess. So this leads us to another important perspective. And again, as Jessica mentioned, experiencing campus for yourself. 
Now we know that nothing can really replace the actual campus experience. Um, we wish that we could invite you to our beautiful campus in Toronto. However, that just can't be the case right now. So with that said, we do have one of our student ambassadors, Mackenzie Lau, uh, also in our kinesiology program in their second year to guide you through our campus virtually over the next 10 minutes. So this is probably the quickest tour we'll ever deliver. So we appreciate you sticking around. Um, please note immediately following this tour, we will finish off with a live Q&A to address all of your remaining questions. Welcome, Mackenzie. Hi, thank you, Caitlin. Um, and hello, everyone. So my name is Mackenzie Lau, and I'm a proud second year kinesiology student here at the University of Guelph Humber. Uh, so welcome to the campus. Let me show you around. I'm so excited to be here with you today and take you up the front steps and inside the U of GH and show you around. So grab your things, maybe a coffee or some dinner right now, and let's go. Follow me around our stunning four-story building, chock full of student support and state-of-the-art facilities. So let's start where there's never-ending energy and where students gather every day, usually, <laughs> in our North Atrium. This North Atrium is the hub of student life and it looks up to our signature spiral staircase, uh, one of five staircases and two elevators that accesses our upper floors. It's the home of the virtual current events board and is the meeting point that most literally breathes life into our campus. With its four story plant wall made up of over 1000 species of green plants and it's one of, its, it's one of the first of its kind in Canada. Its biofilter cleans the air in the building and offers a perfect backdrop for a photo you can really feel the difference in the air. Me, loving plants always. Um, I obviously have to say, this is my favorite feature of the entire building. It brightens me up all the time when I feel when I smell the freshly watered plants on the wall as I'm slugging into my 8 a.m. chemistry labs. Photos clearly do not do this justice. As we move around the atrium, we pass our main entrance info desk and our many student service offices. Here to support you in your learning, in your admission, decisions, and advising for work placements and career planning, academics, and student financial services. Students connect with student services to speak to our extremely helpful staff one-on-one -on -one to ensure that they're always making the most of their time here at the university. So back in our atrium, business students can be found making events come to life in our art gallery. So where in the Advanced Management 2 course, uh, students are given a budget of up to $1,500 to source, plan, and execute an event. Events of all kinds have been held here, from art exhibitions to product launches, even though usually when I pass by, um, I'm amazed at what's in there and I always take a look. So across from, our, uh, from the atrium and the art gallery, we find GH 111 and GH 117, which are two 120 seat lecture halls, which are the largest in the university. With the average class size of 49, most of our classrooms seat 65 students or less. The larger first year courses are held here and equipped with natural lighting, swivel chairs, outlets at each desk. Um, these halls also allow the opportunity to work in small groups. I was here for mostly all of my first year courses. Um, and we basically did live here. Compared to other universities, this may be small, but for Guelph Humber, this is the biggest that it will get. And I can guarantee every seat in that classroom will have, will guarantee a great learning experience. So as we head back up to the spiral staircase and up to the second floor, let's stop and check out our newly renovated practice presentation rooms. Built with the help of alumni donors, these rooms act as practice boardrooms for student project groups and just to enhance their public speaking. PowerPoint presentations, meetings, case delivery skills, anything you, you can name it. The sound dampening design um, allows for quiet in the room when campus is buzzing and busy. Our new case competition course allows business students to learn how to tackle business cases and take the opportunity to take part in one of our award-winning case competition teams, some of which have actually taken home some major hardware at competitions across the globe, such as the big win last year in Johannesburg, South Africa. One of these team members worked extremely hard to prepare for this competition while on the team, and she often credits these experience to getting her job right after graduation as a senior reconciliation officer at Scotiabank. 
So as we work our way around the second floor, we find various student spaces for individual study and study groups, as well as our learning commons, where many student leaders help classmates with computer, academic, career, and research support, and get paid to build, a, sorry, and get paid and build resume experience for doing so. And just around the corner from that, the Ignite Leadership Lounge is located across from the JH Cafe Eatery, um, which side note does serve Starbucks, which is a big bonus, <laughs> and gives the space for student leaders to assemble, plan, execute, um, and uh, any student initiatives and events and pursue any common interests. So many future leaders will find themselves in meetings in this space, whether your interest is starting a club or an academic society um, or just getting involved in student politics, you may find yourself using this space and using many new life skills. So now it's time to head up to the third floor where we'll take a peek inside the several learning um, applied learning labs the Early Childhood Studies has. So the Early Childhood Studies program houses two amazing facilities on this floor, the Innovative Learning Lab, a state-of-the-art classroom that teaches future educators uh, to understand learning styles by using them themselves. Learning pods are equipped with smart boards and a variety of seating styles, including wiggle chairs, beanbag chairs, and bicycle desks for the active kinesthetic learner. Some of my friends have actually written exams sitting on those beanbags, which is so cool. So the Early Childhood Resource Room is a social hub for ECS students and where students can sign out hundreds of learning resources to bring to their work placements. In schools and therapeutic settings, such as Ronald McDonald House and Sick Kids Hospital, among many others, in order to learn techniques and enrich their lesson plans. Next, we're going to move on to the Crime Scene Investigation Lab. So should you feel uncomfortable with viewing a crime scene up close, which may include blood, um, please minimize your Zoom window at this time and I'll inform you when you can join back. So the CSI lab is set up by professors to emulate the various components of a recent crime. So these students will assess fingerprints and blood splatter. Um, and this is just one of the ways that our justice studies students can apply their classroom living uh, sorry, learning outside in the classroom. Students can join and compete in the uh, international competitions with our CSI case team um, or get involved and prepare for law school or other graduate studies with our pre-law society or Alpha Phi Sigma Honor Society. So if you're comfortable with joining back, uh, you may join back now. And we're just going to head down the hallway. So down the hallway from the CSI case lab, you'll find a series of labs dedicated to our media and communications study students. Our editing suite offers uh, 27 inch iMac workstations equipped with industry leading design software such as the Adobe Creative Cloud, which are here for digital journalism and visual communication students to produce and edit their work. Our control room allows students to learn how to create lighting and sound behind the magic of television. So now let's take a quick peek into our photography lab, where digital marketing and social media, visual communication, and multimedia journalism students shoot and edit their work. Our multi-purpose production studio hosts a soundstage, a green screen, and allows students to produce live television broadcasts and podcasts on location. So for those of you that follow us on social media, which is at Guelph Humber, if you want to give it a follow, you may recognize some of these facilities as we use them on our web series, What's Up Wednesdays. Lastly, our new and ever evolving virtual reality lab is equipped with the 360 Google cameras that actually allowed us to create much of this tour. So down the hall and around the corner, we find the experiential learning lab used by our family and community social services students, a simulated model of a typical community agency office with two counseling rooms and a one-way mirror, which actually allows students to role play their client interviews and mock counseling sessions in realistic manners. In this same space, psychology students can use this lab to conduct their research. So students can be hired as research assistants um, and work a paid position alongside a professor and collect and interpret data on a specific topic.
a former tour leader, which I know named Skylar, was actually hired as um, a psychology research assistant last year. And the topic she studied helped her write her thesis and gave her the opportunity to present her findings at an academic uh, conference last winter. As we head back down to the second floor, we invite you to know the full Humber College campus by visiting their North Campus tour, which can be found at humber.ca. And Humber Buildings house many of our shared student services, such as the library, which is housed in the Learning Resource Commons, or LRC, um, the bookstore, where you can find all of your textbooks, uh, the Student Wellness and Accessibility Center, or SWAC, as you may hear, uh, also our math and writing centers, international uh, testing centers, as well as additional eateries. And I just wanted to note there are so many good food options here at Humber. So if you're a burrito lover or if you love jerk chicken, um, if you like to keep it healthy uh, and fresh with some veggie bowls or a salad bar, we definitely have options for you. And two days a week, there's even a pay what you can soup bar that caters to students using sustainable cooking methods, no waste. Um, I personally have many dietary restrictions and allergies and food has never been a concern for me, which was a huge relief. Um, there are seemingly endless options and it's so easy just to go around anywhere and there's always food options there that you will definitely want to grab. So lastly found at Humber and frequently used by um, our students are the athletic facilities, especially kinesiology students. Um, here there's more study spaces along the way, which also includes a treadmill desk and my personal favorite, which is our unique kinesiology labs. So these exercise prescription labs is where students will take multiple courses on prescribing individuals exercise plans and partake in related hands-on learning, such as athletic taping, stress management and meditation, and get to use body assessment equipment, such as bod pods, which uh, will allow students to understand body composition in the context of health and disease risk factors. So you'll learn this in class and then you can actually go and use the equipment that are usually only found in hospitals or special places. And from here, we're gonna head back across the Humber Bridge and through our main doors for a quick walk across the parking lot to residence where U of GH offers three, sorry, shares three buildings and learning living communities with Humber College students. For students that want to live on campus, single style rooms are assigned to applicants who receive an offer of admission and apply to residents by June 1st. Living in residence has the added perk of being situated on the Humber Arboretum, a 250 acre green space that's set just behind campus and filled with award-winning garden spaces, hiking trails, and even an outdoor classroom. It's beautiful in the summer, winter, fall, spring, all seasons. I stayed in residence my first year and it was very convenient for me. Living in a single style room um, for my first year was also very different from what I saw when I was um, looking around at different universities. Um, and I personally preferred having a single style room because I think it really taught me independence and I still made friends the minute that I unpacked my car on move-in day um, with both students from GH and Humber and from a variety of different programs. So being on campus for those early classes or studying on campus late at night, it really helped being on campus um, and just being across the parking lot. Uh, it made it a lot easier to transition for me also from high school as I wasn't worrying about commuting for hours um, each day. So now that you've had a glimpse around the U of GH building and the surrounding area, I hope you have a feel for what it's like to benefit from the many state-of-the-art facilities that we pack into one friendly building and the high level of support, pride, and many opportunities that come along with being a U of GH student. Thanks for joining me on our virtual guided tour, and I hope to see you on campus soon. Now I'll hand back, I'll hand back the mic to Caitlin, I believe, for the Q&A, and just to share a few important reminders. Nice meeting all of you. Thank you, Mackenzie, for that very comprehensive view of campus. Um, I hope you all at home got a sense to, of a uh, uh, just how welcoming and lovely our campus is. Um, I know I enjoyed my four years there when I was a student. And now we're going to turn it over to your questions. Um, so I know that we are a little over time just because we have a lot of great stuff to cover. Um, so we do appreciate your patience as we get through our questions. I'm now going to invite all of our staff. So Sandra, Joseph, 
um, and Jessica to turn their mics and cameras on and we'll get right to it. So the first question I have here, I believe would be for Joseph. Um, Joseph, uh, this question is asking about virtual learning. So if uh, classes are still going to be held virtually, um, do you happen to know if uh, students will be receiving any kits or anything of that sort for hands-on experiences at home? That is definitely a great question. Um, so what I will say is that although um, we haven't gained, gotten any word of what students may re be receiving in terms of kits this year uh, or for this upcoming year, last year, uh, the kinesiology program did uh, provide our first year students with anatomically correct skeletons, which was part of their kit. Um, and this was really an asset for students to be able to learn within the classroom. Um, and we have received uh, amazing feedback from students uh, with respect to these, uh, these skeletons that were provided um, for learning purposes. Now, in addition to all of that, um, in addition to kits, in terms of online learning, um, we often get asked the question like, is it just going to be boring lectures online? And the answer to that is we are doing everything in our power to ensure that students are still going to receive that interactive experience, um, even if it is virtual. Um, and so I know the human anatomy lab that students take part in over, uh, you know, when they are on campus, they usually would travel to the University of Guelph. Obviously, this year specifically, that wasn't the case due to COVID but uh, they were able to produce amazing um, virtual lectures where they were still um, at, at times, you know, the instructor was in lab showing students around uh, where students actually felt like they still were literally there despite not being physically there. So I can assure you that your learning experience will still be uh, phenomenal if we do uh, remain in a virtual environment. But I guess that leads me to answering the question that many of you are probably thinking, and that's what does the fall semester hold for all of us at the university? And so um, at this time, I will say that no firm decision has been made. However, um, one thing that we are doing is we are trying to plan for as much face-to-face -face as possible. Um, obviously, with that being said, face-to-face um, -face learning really does depend on the guidelines of public health. So our utmost importance will, all, uh, importance will always be our uh, health and safety of our current students, our students, our staff, our faculty, and everyone else who's part of the amazing community at the University of Guelph Humber. So we are going to follow the health and safety guidelines. Um, once a decision has been made as what the fall semester will look like, uh, I can assure you that we will uh, let you know. Now, in addition to that, uh, you know, we're planning for as much face to face, but if, if that's not possible, um, perhaps maybe even a blend of uh, in person and online learning. So stay tuned for that message. As soon as we know, I can assure you, you'll know. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely be in touch via email with that information. Katie? Thanks, Joseph. Um, I'm actually going to invite Mackenzie um, to come on camera for just a second. I know that Mackenzie's in her second year, um, she mentioned that she was able to get um, some type of hands-on experience at home kit. Mackenzie, would you like to elaborate a little bit more on that for this question? Yes, for sure. Um, I just wanted to note that um, my first semester of my second year, um, it was online and they did um, end up sending us a few things to help with our like learning instead of um, obviously doing it in person. So one thing was this fitness assessment kit. I have it right here. <laughs> um, it was just this little backpack. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and it included a skin fold caliper to help with uh, measuring body composition. Came with a stethoscope for um, just helping some, um, like measuring some physiological processes. And it came with everything that we needed to test fitness, like all the stopwatches, the heartbeat monitors. Um, yeah, it was super cool doing it all in my room. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing, Mackenzie. 
Um, all right, so we're going to move on to the next question, I believe, for Joseph as well. Um, Joseph, this question is um, in terms of the final date for hearing an offer of admission. Um, can you share with us when students, if they have not yet received an offer of admission, when they could potentially hear back from, not potentially, when they will firmly hear back from us? Yes, for sure. So I know that uh, that is definitely um, a question that is top of mind for many students. And um, what one thing that I will say is, uh, first off, before I go into that final uh, answer, that firm date, um, as we continue to receive grade data, we will continue to assess applications. So if you're in a position where you haven't heard back as of yet, um, I do want to assure you that there is still time. Um, being that this year it looks a little bit different, we're kind of in like a, some students are doing quad masters, others are doing octomesters. We aren't receiving grade data as, as fast as we usually do in typical years. So for example, typically we would have, um, you know, your, your, your um, midterm marks for your second semester, which would include your bulk of four classes. So um, as we continue to receive your grades, I know that you just finished third, your third quad semester. So we're expected to receive grades. I believe it's actually this week. Uh, we'll continue to assess applications, but um, students will have a decision whether or not they received admission to the University of Guelph Humber. Um, by, I believe it's May 27th, which is our final date. So you will hear with a firm decision by May 27th deadline. Um, so be sure to stay tuned. I can assure you that uh, there is still time. So for those of you who haven't uh, received an offer of admission, if you're a little worried at this point, um, another thing that I will remind you is we have a student profile, which is a form that is available on our website for students who may fall a little below the cutoff average, um, but really anyone can fill one out. And that is due on May 1st. And essentially there, you'll be able to tell us any factors that may have impacted your grades, whether those be personal or health related. So um, check that out as well. Thank you, Joseph. So um, I'm going to send off the next few questions to Sandra. Um, so Sandra, this particular question involves working in labs. So um, can, can graduates or can people work in different types of lab after they graduate from the kinesiology with their degree? Um, so an example here is can they work in similar labs as one would in a biology undergrad would? Yes. So uh, again, you're getting um, a four-year honors bachelor's degree from Guelph University. So it is in applied uh, science and kinesiology, uh, but anywhere that a job is asking for a degree, um, you would be able to apply to that. So as I saw that, that question came in, I quickly went online uh, and anything that was asking for like life labs, uh, bio labs, they all are asking for an, a degree in sciences with biomechanics, uh, biochemistry. So yes, you, you, met all, you, you hit all those markers. The wonderful thing that Guelph Humber gives you is the work experience component. So if you know that this is your area of expertise, this is when you work with me starting from right from year one and you say, okay, well, my field placement comes up. I want to be in a lab situation. So we get you contacting and networking within that lab right from when you get into field placement for year three. So yes. <laughs> thank <short> you. <laughs> thank you very much, Sandra. <laughs> yes. Thank you so, so much. Um, this next question, Sandra, is regarding nutrition. Um, can students get involved in uh, different nutrition industries or for their education when they graduate from the program? Okay, so this one's a really tricky one. And I get this one all the time from students, normally in second to third year. Um, if we've done our job right, we've introduced you to a whole bunch of stuff. You're feeling a little confused, but you're feeling, you know what? Maybe nutrition is my way to go. There are ways to, to work in nutrition. There are definitely ways to do that. 
To become a registered dietitian, however, you will not be able to do that. So to be very clear that if you're looking at your end goal of being that registered dietitian, mm, this is, this is, there's a different pathway for that kind of end goal. I will tell you though, this year we had a networking event with New York uh, Chiropractic College and uh, in Seneca, New York. And they're very interested in our kinesiology students. And they, along with, so let's say, you know, this is an area of interest for you. They have, along with getting into their chiropractic program and becoming a doctor of chiropractic, they also have a minor that you can take at the same time that is a master's in applied clinical nutrition. So I thought that was a really cool one and one that I like to bring forward to students. So again, if there's a will, there's a way. There's also uh, health inspectors. So it depends on the type of nutrition and the, and the type of path that you wanna go into. So there's lots of things to do. Always so many little, little niche markets that you've never even heard of. And that's what Sandra's here for, right? Is uh -huh. to to help you navigate and, and discover all of these different niche markets that can really blend into your interest with kinesiology. So thanks for answering that. Um, Sandra, once again, we have a placement question for you. Um, so this is adding on to Jessica. So I know Jessica had mentioned she had done a placement virtually. Um, is there opportunities for virtual placements um, moving forward? Yes. Yes. And I, I think this is going to be, you know, COVID has brought so much light to things um, and, and things that, you know, things that we thought we could never do before. We've really, um, we've really rose to the occasion. Um, and I think our placements have really uh, demonstrated that. We've done a lot with our industry partners who have gone in and out of lockdowns. Uh, we've done a lot with them and virtual. So we did not only in placement, we did a hybrid version. So we had sometimes students were in placement, sometimes they were doing things remotely. Uh, so we had in-person hybrid and we had full remote placements in some amazing settings this year. So um, yeah, definitely there's, there's room for a virtual placement. Thank you very much, Sandra. Um, I believe this next question will be for Joseph. Um, Joseph, can you tell us, um, in the int introduction to kinesiology course, um, do you need one science or do you need two sciences? Yeah, so I did see that question in the chat and I believe it's in respect to admissions at the University of Guelph Humber. Um, and what courses students need um, in order to get into the program. So what the subject requirements are. So for the kinesiology program, what we need students to have is their ENG for you or EAE for you. Um, any for you level math, so that could be data, calculus, or advanced functions, any one will do. And any two courses from the sciences. So that could be biology, chemistry, physics, or it also includes the PSK for you course. So that is the introduction to kinesiology course. Um, so for any Ontario students listening in the audience, if your high school does offer the introduction to kinesiology course or otherwise known as PSK for you, that can count towards one of two sciences for your uh, requirements. And then of course, we'll need two additional courses uh, at the for you or M level, whichever two courses you choose. So again, just to summarize, ENG for you or EAE for you, any for you level math, any two sciences, which could include the PSK for you course, and then two additional for you or M level courses, and the estimated cutoff average of 75 to 80 percent. Um, and that uh, that average is um, it, it's a, an admission average of your top six courses, inclusive of those subject requirements. Hopefully that answers. Thank you, Joseph. Um, and I believe this next question, um, I will throw it to you. Um, and then it's regarding the kinesiology program overall. Um, so with Guelph Humber's program, respectively, um, what makes our kinesiology program stand out apart from the first year cadaver lab and the diploma options? Um, is this something that you're able to uh, address? Yeah, for sure. So honestly, um, that question comes at us very often. And unfortunately, we can't speak on behalf of other institutions. So all we can do is definitely speak on our own institution, as that is the information that we have. But 
I mean, I will go ahead and, and tell you all the great things about the University of Guelph and Burn. I'm pretty sure we summarized a lot of them uh, within this presentation. I'm not going to steer away and say um, that, you know, steer away from the diploma because earning both a degree and a diploma in four years is extremely unique. Um, and what that means or signifies receiving a diploma is that you're going to have all these amazing hands on experiences within your four years. And that's experiential learning. That is in all of your courses, you're not just gonna have a course where you learn the theory and that's it. You're going to learn how to apply that theory in the real world. Um, Jessica and Mackenzie did an amazing job today uh, telling you about all of the labs that you'll have exposure to. Um, it's state-of-the-art equipment. It's equipment that not every institution has. The bod pod, that machine costs a lot of money and is honestly, it's so amazing that our students have access to it because many students don't get to use um, that kind of equipment until they're on the job training um, and you have exposure to it right away. Uh, in addition to that, um, you're not going to be attending an institution where you are you know, with hundreds of students in a lecture. Um, you're going to have smaller lectures uh, because of our close-knit community, which really allows you to build connections with not only your peers, but most importantly, your instructors. Um, they are industry professionals. They are ones that you wanna have conversations with, you wanna connect with, you wanna gain those reference letters. Um, and, and finally, if you're thinking about graduate school, whether that be um, medical school or a master's, you need to have an amazing application. And part of that amazing application is being able to say that you have been actively involved on campus. Um, and why that is important is because the on-campus experiences that you have really build up your resume and it makes you stand out from your peers. So being able to get involved on campus at the University of Guelph Humber is way easier than most institutions because of the fact that you're not having to compete with a lot of students to be part of the societies. Most of our students are part of societies because our, uh, or clubs even, because our campus is so close knit. It's, a, it's an amazing environment. And we honestly at the University of, of Guelph Humber believe in heavily that all students should have equal experiences and opportunities. Um, and that is definitely found in who we are as, as an institution. So. Um, I think that hopefully covers a lot of it without speaking to other institutions, but, but truly uh, the University of Guelph Humber is a remarkable institution that provides you more in your four years. Yes, thank you, Joseph. Very well said. Um, lots of really good information there. Um, I know you, you talked a little bit about professors, um, uh, specifically um, being able to have those connections. Um, so this next question, I think, ties in really nicely, and I may actually also ask Jessica um, on her perspective about professors. So um, this particular question is asking what instructors were like. Um, are you able to connect with them easily? Um, and what would you say are one of the reasons they make the program so great? Um, so Joseph, I don't know if you wanted to tackle this one first, and then we ask uh, maybe Jessica about your experience with some of your instructors. Sorry, just to clarify, the question is asking what makes our instructors so great? Was that it? Yeah, so the, it's a three part question. And then one of them is, um, what's one of the reasons why uh, they really enrich the program and why they, why they really add value to the program and make it really great? Yeah, for sure. So I think Jessica will definitely be able to touch on this further, but all I will say is that um, our program heads at the University of Guelph Humber do an amazing job ensuring that the, the individuals who are teaching you in the classroom know what they are teaching you. Um, they don't just have the knowledge, the textbook knowledge um, that, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's required to obviously teach as a professor but they have the job experience. They are individuals who have years and years of experience in the field. And therefore they are truly able to, to, to show you as a student, here's why this theory is important. And then give you an example 
um, of maybe how they have in their time as a professional um, put that theory into practice. So it really allows the textbook to, to come to life. Um, and I think that's what makes our professors at the University of Guelph Humber very unique is that they carry a lot of industry experience. Um, they have a lot of connections. So they often bring in a lot of guest speakers who are their friends from the field to also um, share their experiences or enrich the classroom environment as well. But Jessica, if you have anything to add or personal stories, we'll be happy to hear. Yeah, Joseph, you hit a lot of the points that I was going to say. Um, but yeah, the professors are very approachable. I, I never really felt intimidated to talk to a professor. Um, they're honestly amazing resources. Even after you graduate, they can be such great references. Um, like Joseph had mentioned, they have a lot of industry experience. So if you ever need advice about future careers or anything like that sort, they're amazing resources. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, and then just a final question for that particular question. Um, they were easy to connect with. Um, if you had any questions on assignments, um, is that correct? Yes, yes, of course. Um, as well, like office hours, very beneficial to go to. Um, just booking in hours with them if you have any concepts that you didn't understand from class. I really encourage it because it does really go a long way, especially when it comes to exam prep. Um, my professor would help me with really breaking down questions and figuring out how to tackle them. So I, I did notice an improvement in my exam score after office hours. So do go to them. Yes, thank you so much. Um, that's what they're there for, to help you and support you along your journey. Um, we do have one question left. Um, I may just ask Joseph, I'm very cognizant of time here. Um, just a very quick question about lectures. Um, when do lectures take place and how long are lectures generally and are there any lectures on the weekend? Yeah, that is a great question. So lectures take place uh, typically Monday through Friday and they're at various times throughout the day. Um, so, you know, I saw in the chat, there was a student asking like, what it does the typical day look like and truly in terms of course schedule um, you're going to be told what courses you need to take in your let's say first semester and then based on that there will be a variety of different times or days that those classes will be offered and so you get to choose ultimately what day or time slot you prefer um, and then the way that that works is uh you know, lectures are three hours long, plus you'll have some labs. So um, every class will look a little bit different, um, but typically the, the lecture component is approximately three hours in duration. Um, and then, yeah, Monday through Friday, typically, and uh, unless you're actually, Monday through Friday is, is what, when they are offered. So hopefully that answers. Thank you so much, Joseph, for tackling that question. And so everyone at home, that concludes today's webinar on kinesiology. So we hope you found all the information and stories shared today helpful as you continue to embark on your university research over the next few months. Now, the conversation doesn't end here. Um, we would like to continue helping you in however ways that we can. So we definitely invite you to check out some of the resources that we posted in the chat, um, as well as other ways to connect with us because there's no shortage of ways to connect. Um, so this includes other virtual offerings. So we do have other GH Talks series, including program webinars and more. Um, we also have next steps happening on May 26th. And this here offers sessions um, for those who are accepting the University of Guelph Humber, uh, they cover your next steps to becoming a U of GH student. So for more information and to register, um, please visit our visit us page using the link in the chat uh, or by checking your email. Uh, next steps will be available in the coming weeks for registration. Any further questions, we definitely invite you to check out our website for more information. Contact us by phone email or by booking a virtual one-on-one -on -one appointment with us using the link in the chat. Now, finally,
please follow us on all of our social channels for the latest and greatest U of GH news and updates throughout your research. Thank you so much again for tuning in today and for your interest in the University of Guelphumber. And we wish you all the best on your research uh, over the next few months. Have a great evening. <laughs>